Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today is November 12th, and um, my name is Sasha Monet. I'm a life coach and an evangelist, and I have a message on today. Uh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Whew. So, um, I'm going to wait and see if a couple people going to hop on. I know everybody probably at work. So you can go back and watch uh go back and watch the replay if you come in late or if you miss it so this is a message right here that I'm just gonna be just <laughs> just so honest as always so honest so transparent um not to toot my own horn but I think this um, one of the things that sets me apart from some people in ministry because a lot of people, you know, they like to portray like they got it all together. You know what I'm saying? And we know that, we know that looks can be very deceiving. Um, I've never been one of those people that just, act like I had it all together or never act like I ain't never had to struggle or anything like that. That's why I have a problem with those type of people or I have a problem with the type of people that when they make it to their successful height or level, they, you know, some people forget where they came from. You know, some people forget about the struggle or some people forget about what God brought them from and um that's not what's up, you know. Um when I pray I um I ask God, I said, you know, Lord, wherever you take me, you know, whatever level I you elevate me to, you know, keep me humble when I get to that place. Uh, that you're taking me to uh, because I don't want to you know think I'm better than nobody or forget where I came from you know I came from the hood so I just want to be an example to people that you know you can you can overcome whatever life throws at you you don't have to you don't have to let your past um, dictate your or your circumstance, so you don't have to let your past uh, determine your future, you know? So I'm really just kind of venting myself, honestly. Um, I ain't gonna even lie, y'all. I, I didn't even want to come on here today. Um, I've been feeling so, so much opposition from the enemy, and he is so relentless. Um, the thing that I have learned about the enemy is that he does not want you to walk in your purpose he does not want you to he is so mad that i'm in my purpose he is so mad that he cannot master me the way that he used to you know normally um some of you may know i used to suffer from depression i used to suffer from anxiety for many years and i got set free last year and so it just grieves me you know to see people still bound to depression and still bound to anxiety it just really it really grieves me because i know how it feels because i had it for for several years and um i used to pretend like i was okay but really i wasn't okay i was just i was broken and just as a wreck as anybody else but on the outside you know it looked like i might have had it together but on the inside, I was, I was a mess, you know, so I've just, 
you know, I've always been um, pretty much transparent and just kind of blunt, you know, kind of straightforward. Um, not, I'm not really into, you know, sugarcoating and stuff like that. So, you know, when I come on here, of course, in all my videos, I want to be upbeat and happy and laughing and things like that because that's who I am, you know. But even though I'm an evangelist or a life coach, I have my days like everybody else, <laughs> you know. But I've learned to just keep pushing through the adversity because what the enemy wants you to do is he wants you to give up. He wants you to be discouraged and he going to do everything in his power to keep you stagnant. He going to do everything to keep you on the same level. You know, he going to do everything to keep you um, unhappy, not healed, broken, just. He's just going to do everything to rob you of your peace and your joy and your money and your blessings. You know what I'm saying? So it's so important to, you know, eliminate as much sin as possible because you need, you know, you need a relationship with God. And we know that sin is what, is what blocks, um, is what places a barrier between God and us. You know, um, God loves us, but he, he hates, he hates sin and it grieves him, you know, when we, when we sin. So, you know, it's important to eliminate, um, eliminate as much sin as, as possible. And it's a process. It's not, it's not going to happen overnight. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it is a process, but what I've learned um, because this has been a very, uh, very challenging season for me. What I have learned is to just take every day with a grain of salt. Because, see, what I've learned about the enemy is that he is so relentless. Especially when you're walking in your purpose. When you're walking in your God-given purpose, he is so relentless. And when you start preaching truth and, and teaching sound doctrine, the enemy, he going he gonna to do everything to try to, to try to stop you, to try to detour you, to try to destroy you, derail you, delay you. But the devil is a liar. And so, um... And this season, it has been very challenging for me, but I have learned to just, to just take every day with a grain of salt because the enemy will, one of his tactics, oh, he got so many tactics, but one of his tactics is he will try to drain you. And if he can drain you and steal your energy, then you won't be as productive as you should. You won't be as effective as you should. You know what I'm saying? So yesterday when I did a live, uh, I was very upbeat, laughing at the enemy and things like that. I had a sense of, you know, joy. But because I have been so obedient to God with showing up and being consistent and things like that, pushing through my adversities, not letting the enemy knock me down in this season, he's mad. So I'm feeling more opposition from him. But I've been learning to this you know, push through the adversity because, you know, the Bible says us don't get a, don't get a devil a foothold. You know what I'm saying? Don't give him a, a foothold. So, um, it's been quite challenging, uh, for me in this season. In this season, I cried. Well, in the previous season, I, oof, I know, I don't think I ever cried so much. But I decree and I declare I'm out of that season and I'm in a new season where it's, it's still challenging because I'm I'm still experiencing the warfare and the opposition from the enemy, but it's a fiery trial. You know, it's 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 a process. You know, God is still processing me, and He's gonna transition me to uh, somewhere where I have never been before. You know, so it gets it gets very very discouraging, and I just can't really to be um of some encouragement to somebody today because 
I understand, you know, out of all people, you know, some people might try to look like or act like they got it all together, but I ain't, I'm not one of those people. I've never been one of those people. I've really been kind of um, taking a break. I'm not on it on uh, Facebook as much because, you know, when you when you get on Facebook and you see people on Facebook, not calling anybody fake, but I'm just saying, and you know, it can get discouraging at times because you're like, okay, well, I know some of these people are not even living right or how they should be living and it seemed like everything going right for them or you know or it's like you see people doing good and you rooting for them okay that's good for them they got this or they got a new job or new car whatever they got and you just like okay this that's good for them but you're like okay lord when it's gonna be my turn or what are my blessings what are my promises it be that you promised me and things like that. So it can be very discouraging. And so I've never been a hater. You know, I would never hate on anybody because we don't know what people go through or what people been through. We don't know what prayers people pray. We don't know how many tears they cried. We don't know what they had to go through behind closed doors. You know, we all fight in different battles and, and, and people fighting different um, demons and things like that behind closed doors. We don't know what people going through so if if we pray for people you know more than we judge them then the world will be a better place so you know as i have been maturing on my walk with the lord i'm not um not judgmental you know anymore but some people think that when you correct them according to the scripture or you teach them you know what is right according to scripture they will take that as judgment or they'll say oh you're judging them when you're really not you're really just trying to you know correct them um according to the word of god so that they can be in alignment with the word of god and be saved but this world that we live in you know, most people, they want to do whatever they want to do. And that's just not what God is about. It's actually quite the opposite. When you actually when you actually come to Jesus, it's, it's very challenging. It's the opposite of living worldly because you, you can't do what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's just challenging. It's been a very challenging season for me and so in this season i said all that to say in this season i've been you know drawing closer to the lord um seeking him for intimacy the relationship has always been there you know since my walk with him but i did not have intimacy with him you know their father their fatherly intimacy and so um now I'm experiencing that and I must say it's a beautiful thing because you know Holy Spirit is such a loving father and caring and he he's he's so loving like he care about every little detail of your life like every little thing like it's nothing too small that he don't care about or it's nothing too hard for him to fix nothing too big for him to fix you know he's such an awesome amazing you know, loving father, you know, it's, it's a beautiful experience. And so I, I always try to, um, encourage people to get a relationship with the Lord. Or I try to encourage them to, um, you know, repent so they can receive the Holy Spirit so that they can, um, have that, that, that relationship with God, because it's, it's really a beautiful thing. And even though, um, this walk is, challenging at times i would rather you know go through it with god with the holy spirit than to be apart from him you know and to be out in the world doing whatever i want to do and you know all of that so it is challenging but it's very it's very rewarding it's very rewarding and i want to try the holy spirit for for nothing in the world because you know, there's a song that says, when you get God, you get everything. When you seek after God, 
you get everything else. Everything else will come into alignment, you know. The scripture tells us, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. And so I'm in a place now where I no longer let my circumstances dictate my emotions. And see, that's how the enemy was able to get me in previous seasons because of me working a dead end job and, um, you know, not being married, taking care of three kids by myself. Um, you know, not having everything that we wanted or having everything that we needed. I would let my circumstances dictate my emotions. And so oftentimes I would, you know, not be productive. You know, um, my videos, I wasn't doing them consistently. So I wasn't as effective. You know, I wasn't probably reaching as many people as I am now. Because I was too focused on my circumstances. I was too focused on what was not going right. And see, that's what the enemy wants you. He wants you in a place of where you so focused on what you don't have. You so focused on what's not going right. And then that causes you to be drained. It causes you to feel heavy. It causes you to feel stressed out. And tired, uh, overwhelmed, fatigued, um, feeling hopeless, you know, feeling like things are not going to get better. And that's so not true. The devil is a liar. And so that's why it's so important to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because he will lead you into all truth. And when you have the comforter, you know, the Holy Spirit, which is the comforter, he will... He will bring you into all truth. Like you, you won't be ignorant of, of Satan's devices. So before I had the Holy Spirit, that's why the enemy had me bound to depression and anxiety for about 20 years. That's how he was able to have me bound for so long because I didn't have the Holy Spirit. But once I got saved and I received the Holy Spirit, then I was able to get set free. You see, when you come to Jesus, and I wasn't even planning on going here, so I know this is all God. When you come to Jesus, you can't do what you want to do. He said, you know, if you say you follow me, pick up your cross and follow after me. And so that's why a lot of people don't want to get saved yet. They don't want to repent because they know that they can't do what they want to do when you become born again. But the thing about it is... It's so much liberation when you become born again. Even though I may can't do worldly things anymore, I'm more freer now that I'm in Christ than I ever was when I was out in the world. Because not only am I more freer, but I got I got a relationship with the Holy Spirit that I can't really even describe. You know what I'm saying? He dwells in me. He, you know, he walks with me. He talks with me. He teaches me. He showed me. He revealed the plans of the enemy when I'm going through it. You know, that discernment, that wisdom. He showed me like what the enemy is doing. He, you know, he's a provider. He's a way maker, a miracle worker. He's just so awesome. You know, it's it's an awesome thing to have um to have the Holy Spirit. So, you know, I challenge you to come to Jesus on today, but. I know I'm all over the place because I'm pretty much just venting. But, um, yeah, that's that's what the enemy, he wants to discourage you. He wants you to stay in a low place. He wants you to feel like things are not going to get better, like you're not going to get married, like, you know, you never, you'll never have that new business or um, your family, uh, you know, your family, things won't never get better in your in your family bloodline just just whatever it is he wants you to be so focused on that that you're not focused on god you know god is bigger than that god is bigger than all of our problems if he created a whole universe and a whole human race of people and animals different um species of animals then surely our little problems that we go through on a day to day Surely God is greater than those, but the enemy, he just so crafty that he will come in like a flood and he'll have you thinking about everything except God. 
And that's, that's a bad place to be. So in this season, I have learned to just focus more on God than to focus on my problems. Because focusing on my problems is not going to help me. Things are not going to get better. But if I focus on God, then things will get better. So I pray that that has helped somebody. And before I get ready to go, I just want to share a scripture. Because y'all know. I'm going to I'm going to bring this scripture no no matter how um I'm feeling you're going to get you're going to get scripture from me. So um let's see the joy of the Lord is my strength. Okay, so the joy of the Lord is my strength that comes from Nehemiah 8 and 10. And I've been praying for strength in uh this season. And I've been praying for joy in this season because when I came across I had heard this verse before the joy of the Lord is my strength, but I never could identify with it because I never had joy. And some people may say, well, wow, she got three children. How she never had joy? Well, I can say I've been happy, you know, plenty of times, or I've been happy at times, but joy is something that no matter your circumstances, you can be at peace, you know, with whatever you're going through. You know, you can be have like this inner peace with, with, with whatever you're going through. And so, yes, I've been happy, but I've never had joy. And I should have looked up the definition of joy before I got on here, but I didn't. But I kind of got an idea of what it is. But um, there's something that I've never had. And so I've been praying for joy in this season to have a permanent joy you know um i'm always praying for strength i pray for strength every day because i know that the enemy is opposing me daily as i'm obedient and surrendering my will for my life to uh for god's will for my life the enemy he really does not like that he first of all he mad because i'm no longer a slave to depression i'm no longer a slave to anxiety you know, I got away. I got away by the power of the Holy Spirit. So he big mad about that. And not only did I overcome that, I overcame COVID. I overcame losing my mind. You know, I overcame everything that the enemy has ever thrown at me. And he's so mad that I overcame it all and that I got away, that I got free. But I would rather be a slave to righteousness than a slave to Satan. I would rather be a slave to righteousness than a slave to depression and anxiety. Like, no. It's so much liberation in becoming born again and receiving the Holy Spirit. So much liberation. liberation. So, um, Second Chronicles 20 and 15 do not be afraid or discouraged, for the battle is not yours, but God's. And again, that comes from Second Chronicles 20 and 15. And, um, you know, a lot of times we try to fight battles that are not ours. But in this season, I'm learning to just let go. Just let go and let God. Because in this season of my life, in the previous season, um... I know for a fact that the battles that I've been facing with, I cannot fight them in my own strength. I don't have enough strength. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough resources. I don't have enough anything, you know, to overcome the battles. And sometimes God will put you in a situation that all you can do is just trust him. And that's, that's where I am. All I can do is just trust God. Like, can't nobody get me out of this situation he's put me in a place where okay you need to be totally dependent on me ain't nobody gonna be able to save you or deliver you out of this process ex except me and oftentimes it's where god will try he will put you in a place of where you will be at your lowest point and the only person that can save you the only person that can rescue you the only person who can deliver you is god that's it. And he will do that when he is trying to either get your attention, if he is trying to uh, take you to a new level, 
if he is trying to um, get you to get a relationship with him, um, and what else? Relationship, um, get your attention, new level. Or if he's just trying to grow you or mature you, whatever it is, um, he will put you in a place where you need him, where you need to be totally dependent on him. And a lot of times he will have you so low, like I have been in this season, that I couldn't do nothing but lean into him and seek him and pursue him. That's it. So, um, and that's what he wants us to do because a lot of times we will, you know, run for run from God. Our human nature have us thinking that oh, we independent, oh, we can do this by ourselves. We don't need God or you know, prayer sometimes to be a last resort and things like that. When no, I, I have learned that prayer should be your first line of defense. You see, a lot of people like to pray after the fact, you know, pray after this has gone wrong. No, prayer need to be your first line of defense always be proactive because you have a, a roaming uh invisible force adversary liar thief murderer he invisible but well, he is roaming like a lion uh seeking who he may devour so you always need to stay prayed up no matter what no matter when things are going good or when they're going bad I always stay prayed up you know you never know what's gonna happen so, um, you know, the Bible says us to pray without ceasing, and it's so necessary. It's so, so necessary. So, I want to uh, give you Psalms 30 and 5. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And I hang on to this scripture because in the previous season, I had, whew, I had cried more in the previous season than I ever have. I mean, it was like I was pregnant, you know. It was like I was pregnant because even when I, I've been pregnant three times, but um, I, I never was one of those women that was sensitive when I was pregnant or crying all the time. That's never been me. But, you know, some, some women are emotional when they're pregnant. And so it's like I was an emotional pregnant woman last season because, like, everything made me cry. Like everything, it was, it was a painful process. I stayed crying many a nights, and so, um, but I always held on to weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. So I'm gonna leave you with um, a couple more scriptures, and then I'm gonna go. Psalm 34 and 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. And so I like to, I like to hang on that too. You know, when um when Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers, the Lord eventually um delivered him. And I like to hang on to that when um when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, um, because he would not I think he would not bow down to the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had. And um, he wanted them to bow down and worship uh, their image or their statue or whatever it was. I have to go back and freshen up on it. And uh, Daniel would not do it. You know, he said, I'm not going to worship your false God. I'm not going to worship your false statue, This whatever this is. No, I'm going to worship my God. He the only God that I'm going to uh, kneel down and worship and pray to. And so King Nebuchadnezzar threw Daniel into the lion's den. And... um. The Lord delivered Daniel. He did not let Daniel get um, eaten up or devoured by the lion, you know. So the Lord delivered him from that uh, that tribulation, you know. And um, there was one more that I wanted to share. Um, who else went through something? Uh, oh, yeah. The three Hebrew boys, you know, when they got thrown into the fiery furnace. The Lord said, not so. You know, they came out smelling like no smoke. So he he delivered them. So I just hang on to that. Yes, uh, the righteous, we, we go through many afflictions. But the Lord will deliver us from them all. And, um, you know, in the previous season, I, I was praying to God and said, Lord, you know, I didn't came to you. And I'm living for you. I'm living right. I'm walking in my purpose. And. 
all this good stuff and I'm still going through all of this, all these trials, all these tribulations and it seems like nothing ain't changing. It seems like nothing ain't getting no better. I don't see my blessings and my promises yet. Like, what is going on, Lord? Like, what am I doing wrong? And it had me thinking and asking, like, what... What am I doing wrong? And I felt like, you know, I can't please God. It, it just, you know, it was it was rough. It was really rough. And so, um, I remember John 15 and 20, and it says that a servant is not greater than his master. So if, if, if Jesus, when he was here on the earth, and he went through many afflictions, many trials, many tribulations, persecutions, slanders, uh, they beat him up, they spat on him. All kind of stuff. They mocked him. They thought he was crazy. They laughed at him. So if, if he went through all of that and he was blameless, he was perfect, then we got to remember that the servant is not greater than the master. So that means we're going to go through trials and tribulations too. But the good thing about it, what I have learned in this new season is that <sighs> no matter what you go through, God said he will never leave you or forsake you. So even though you going through the process, you going through the fiery trial, you going through the test, you going through the trials, you going through the tribulations, God is in the fight with you. He in the storm with you. He love you so much that he don't just leave you and say, okay, my child, I'm going to get you through this, but I'm not going to go through it with you. No. He actually go through it with you. He go through the fire with you. He go through the rainstorm with you. He go through the hurricane with you. He go through the fiery trials with you. And that's what makes it beautiful because that, that lets you know how much he really does love you. And it lets you know how much he really does care because he goes through it with you. And everything that you feel, he feels. Um, I've learned that in this season. When I'm grieving, he's grieving. When I'm sad, he said, you know, he said it because I'm sad or he's sad because I'm disappointed. So that's why he don't want me to focus on my problems because he want me to focus on him because he's the one who can get me out of my problems. And then when he get me out, it's going to be for his glory. And then I'm going to testify, you know, I'm going to testify that, you know, God brought me up. So I pray, um, that this has blessed you on today. Um, Lord willing, I will show up tomorrow. And um, if you are feeling down and out, feeling discouraged, um, you know, just hold on, trust God, stay in your word, listen to your worship music, pray, pray without ceasing, seek the Lord, trust in the Lord with uh, all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths and he tells us to cast our cares on him because he cares for us so i pray that this has blessed you on today and i'm i'm gonna go maybe lay down take a nap something i don't know <laughs> but y'all be blessed y'all have a great a great rest of the day